I'm in Columbia talking to Sally Sharp at Sal's Old Timey Feed and See. Yes, <laughs> yeah. hey, how are you doing? I'm good, um, but there really isn't anything much old timey about what goes on out here. Um, it's, there's a lot of people learning stuff, um, but interestingly, I think this is family property. Yes, we're the eighth generation. My niece and nephew is going to be the ninth generation on the property. Isn't that fun? And one thing is you said when y'all were growing up, y'all grew a lot of your own food. And so you kind of want people to know that that's something they can do. Yes. And you don't have to have a large acreage to do it. Um, we grow a lot of stuff in pots and containers. Um, yes, raised beds. And this potato tower is the craziest thing. I mean, you've got, <laughs> you seem to love potatoes and you've got them growing everywhere, but you just, we, you improvise yes. with anything you come across. We do. Nothing is trash around here. If we can <laughs> plant something in it, it stays around. <laughs> <laughs> and um, when the um, Irish potatoes mm -hmm. um, finish, then you go in and plant sweet potatoes, I think, don't you? Um, yeah, so um, uh, Irish potatoes are cool weather crops where sweet potatoes are hot, hot, hot. Yeah, so they're it not loves, the same. No, yeah. it loves July, August when we're dying of heat stroke. They're growing big time. <laughs> and um, everybody loves to grow tomatoes. And you said you've done well with containers and there you've got some tips for people. Yes, the main thing is to feed it, feed it, feed it. A uh -huh. lot of people plant and then don't ever come back and fertilize with anything. Um, we use organic fertilizers, and then we also have a way that we make our own um, fertilizer. And then you said um, a lot of people say, oh, I want heirlooms, but it's not good to only plant an heirloom because they're a no. little picky. <laughs> yes, heirlooms have, I tell people, an A++ taste, but you don't get as much off of them. The hybrids um, are very prolific, and we've got some that I would give an A to um, for us taste-wise. You like which one, I think you The Amelia. Yeah. It does really good around here. It's very, very prolific. And I think everybody knows around July, August, your tomatoes are going to start kind of petering out. Um, it's a good time to replant at that point. But your Amelia tomato is going to have about 55 to 60 tomatoes on one bush. Wow. And then it's going to peter out then, but then it's time to replant. There you go. Um, and then you do have um, high tunnels. And explain yes. to people what a high tunnel is. So a high tunnel is for extending the season. So it's for being able to start early and then have your crops going later. So we had peppers, um, tomatoes, moringa trees, um, all growing in there until that real deep freeze that we had in December, which is not very usual here. And but and because you don't provide any supplemental heat, it just stays no. warmer because it's covered. It, well, um, during to the nighttime, yeah. it's going to be the exact same temperature as outside. Ah. Um, but the ground temperature stays warm, oh. and that's important. Now, we did put some propane heaters in there last year um, when it got sure. really cold yeah. uh, for a few hours. Um, and we had to time it because, you know, propane's expensive. So yeah. um, I would be up like at 12 in the morning when the temperature started going down and set it and then come back out Ooh, about, la la. you know, three or four hours <laughs> later and cut it back off. You'd think <laughs> a farmer could sleep at night. No, not at all. <laughs> it's a 24-7. <laughs> and you've got it on a slope, I think, for a purpose. Yes, um, two things. That way we can collect the rainwater off of yeah. it. Um, the rainwater is a pure water, so it doesn't put any um, heavy metals into when you grow your crops. And also, that way we're, um, we're letting the land do what it wants to do and the water still runs off exactly the same and we're not having to just go in and tear up the property and you have the funniest thing these th bottles and bottles sitting up there full of weeds what in the heck is going on yes yeah, so that's how we make our own fertilizer <laughs> so if you think about it a plant is a chemical reaction it's bringing all the calcium nitrogen phosphorus heavy minerals all the minerals back out of the ground so if you're pulling up your weeds, you're pulling all that stuff up. So instead of throw it away, we put it in some water and um, add a little yeast to it and uh, let it sit for three days and just feed it back to the plants. <laughs> And it works amazing. You ought to see what we can grow. You've seen it. Yeah, it was really fun. But that was just crazy. It's a little thing. stinky, but it works. Yeah, it was a little <laughs> silly. And um, down in that area, you have some perennial crops, I think. 
Yes, we do. So we have sunchokes. Um, sunchokes, um, not too many people know about it, but it's a native plant. It's a type of sunflower, but they're good for the roots. And as you can see, they're really starting to bloom right now when the bees need that extra nectar where everything else is kind of stopping due to the weather change. And I call them artichokes because um, we make artichoke pickle. You do, yes. Which, it's, it's really good. Which, now, it's <laughs> super important to harvest them at the right time. Um, so you want the tops to completely die. Um, normally, that's the end of December. You need to have a heavy frost. Um, if it gets... If they die back and then it gets hot again, you don't want to eat them because okay. they will. They'll give you gas. Yes, they'll give you gas. <laughs> That's a nice fresh <laughs> Weeds grow fast, but I think you've got a tree that maybe grows faster than the weeds. Yes, yeah, so we um we have the moringa tree around here. Um, it's a real neat tropical tree, and it has everything on it necessary necessary for life. Um, and when, once it gets really hot, it can potentially grow six inches in 24 hours. What do you mean it has everything on it? Um, so it's got calcium, it's got a complete, um, all the amino acids, um, it's got vitamin A, vitamin D, it's got everything in it. So how do people prepare it or use um, it? You could eat it raw, you can dry it, you can make a tea out of it. It's, it's a really cool um, plant. Gosh, more things to learn at sales. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Always learning. <laughs> You've got a compost pile, um, and I think that your nephew is in charge of kind of keeping that going. He is. He's chief in charge of uh, manure, yes. So he goes into the pasture with the tractor, cleans it up, brings it down here, um, and then Colton turns it as needed. He's a big help around here. And a little kid driving that tractor so expertly. Yes, he's been doing it for a long time. And then um, you, he turns the compost and it ends up just being a wonderful addition that you can use to top dress and all kinds of things. Yes, I tell people when your compost starts turning nice and black, that is fantastic. That's a perfect home for your plants. And then you've got animals here because education, you want people to see that there are animals. And so what have you got that um, produces compost? <laughs> So we've got mules, um, uh -huh. and we've got donkeys, yeah. and we also have a really old horse. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you said some people think that donkeys um, are just can take care of themselves, but I think they need some special care sometimes. They do. A lot of people think they can just get a donkey and put out in the pasture, but they need their hoofs cleaned. Um, they need proper grooming. Um, they got to stay a, a good weight. Um, it's real easy to get them too fat, and it causes a lot oh, of problems. Okay. Um, and then mules are just are they stubborn? <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not stubborn, but they're very, very smart. Ah. Um, so people tell, uh, there's a phrase that says, you've got to treat a mule the way you're supposed to treat a horse. So ah. they will not let you be lazy on training. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then also, um, we've got these incredible birds. Yes. Yeah, so um, one of the um, biggest things we do on the farm are white dove releases. Um, and the white doves are actually homing pigeons. Um, there's some people that think when you let the doves go, they just die and that's it. These birds are trained to come home upon release. And you, so you put different colored bands on them according to how many times they've come back. You've got yes. some that are wearing the band because they've come back 50 times. I do. So once they come back about 50 times um, from 10 to 15 miles or more, they get a white band. That's pretty yes. cool. And so a lot of people like to ha come and um, take advantage of that opportunity th because at funerals or weddings and things like that, they want yes. something happy to happen. Exactly. Lift and your spirits. Yes, and th they're an ancient animal. Um, from the dawn of time, just about, people have been letting them go as messenger pigeons. Um, so yes, they're very amazing. And um, then we have fresh eggs available here. And yes. um, I think you've got a bunch of chickens. We've got a lot of chickens. <laughs> and uh, one of the most interesting chickens we have are the Indian jungle fowl. Um, it's uh, pretty much a wild chicken. Um, just about the first uh, chicken that was ever around. And inside the store, um, you offer a lot of seeds, heirloom seeds and things yes. like that. We do. So um, we're, we have a lot of different seeds. We have a cold room where we keep them down at 40 degrees. Um, so you can always know your seeds are nice and fresh and, and you can produce some great crops with them. And people, since you're involved in education, sometimes you have classes out here. Yes. And then also you 
if people want to do this, you make a box that people can subscribe to and they get it every month or two with things they can plant. Yes, well, a lot of people don't know in South Carolina is you can grow year round. So there's something all the time to grow in South Carolina. So that box has got the directions, online helps, and the seeds, bulbs, and different things that you can plant within that month. That's so much fun because then a family, and since you've told us we can do so many things in mm -hmm. containers, a family has a way to start getting their children excited about the land and understanding everything. Exactly, because children will eat what they grow, and what you grow is so much more tasty than what you get in the store because it's uh, it's you're planting it within the season without a lot of heavy chemicals on it. Um, it, so yes. And you have school groups come sometime and we got yes. to see a darling little batch of them and you give them little things because you want them to learn that there's a place for everything in nature. So <laughs> these children, tell us about some of the things you like for them to protect and not yes. be scared of. So on the farm you're liable to see bats if you're here at night. Um, you might come across a snake, um, frogs, and all these animals are beneficial. A lot of people try to kill them, but we need to live in harmony with them and learn about them. And we stress the importance of the kids not touching the animals. Don't touch wild animals, but respect them and don't kill them. So I'm hoping that they're going to spread the word um, and more people will start protecting the environment. Well, Sal, I think you're um, one person who's trying to make the world a better place. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I really do. And if people want to find out more about you, um, do you have a website or what's the best way to find out? Yeah, so salslocalseed.com. Um, you can sign up for our newsletter and find out when to grow and different classes we have. We have homesteading classes, um, all kind of different things. Well, I want to thank you for letting us come today. Oh, thank you so much. It's been a delight.